Hello everybody, in this tutorial I'm going to be showing you how to make this video right here, which is basically a subject walking, lifting his hands up, and having an element, which in this case is just some sci-fi HUD, motion track around with his hand. And I'll be showing that to you guys next. So all we're going to do is open a new project here. Uh, I'm going to do new composition for footage because I'm going to use a video that I've already recorded as the main source. All right, and here is the video. We're just gonna play through it real quick. Um, all it is is my coworker walking forward and lifting his hand up, pretending that there's going to be a HUD centered right on his hand, moving around as a tracker linked to his hand. So first thing we're gonna do is, I'm actually gonna move to the area where I want the HUD to start, which is about here. So if I'm not gonna have any elements starting previously or in the beginning of the video, I don't need to set a tracker there. So I'm just going to click here, track motion. And using my command and scroll wheel on my mouse, I'm gonna zoom in and now with my space, I'm gonna move a little bit. The camera, the lens we were using in the camera and the whole environment wasn't too great. Um, so it might be a little bit blurry here. Let's see, let's just have it set here. But we're going to do our best to have this tracker point track it. So I'm going to put it here on the thumb because this thumb is constantly being linked uh, to the hand. Okay, it's not it's not going away from the hand as much. All right, it may be moving around the composition, but it's not moving away from the hand. So I'm going to add that there. Make it a little bit big just so it recognizes it. So I don't want it to be too big so it doesn't. So that After Effects doesn't have a problem with locating where I want the actual tracker point to be, but I also don't want it to be too small so that it doesn't give it enough leeway to actually track the thumb itself. So I'm going to have it there. I'm going to want to start it here, right here where, where I have it. And I'm just going to press this kind of play button, which is Analyze Forward. So it's going to start analyzing that area and move around with it as the video plays. And it's going to create new uh, keyframes basically throughout the entire uh, rest of the scene and I'll show you here so I'm going to analyze forward and you see that it's, it's jagged but it's moving with it okay just like that and you'll see here that it'll start having these kind of different track points which are just the keyframes for it if I bring this down you can see all of them right here and you can always add more trackers um, on different areas of the composition or like in different parts of the hand but just for this one since it's just a simple hut that I'm overlaying I am going to be just using one tracker point um, it should be fine for this example just to show you guys how to um, like a basic start to how to motion track in After Effects so now that I have that here I am going to need to create another layer and it's not just any layer it's going to be a null layer Null layers is basically, or no object layer, is basically a layer that doesn't have anything in there except the keyframe, so it'll never actually have any objects in there. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to link the tracker points, or keyframes, to this null layer. And the way I'm going to do is I'm going to go to my source here, and up in this tracker section I am going to do edit target, and I'm I already have it, it's automatically set to the null. And that's where I'm going to apply the motion to. I'm going to do OK. And I have to hit Apply. Apply all the dimensions, X and Y. OK. You see this box here? That's the null layer. It's linked to here, and it moves with it. You see that? Now, once I bring in my element, which is the HUD, I will attach it or link it to the null, and it will start moving with it. So I'm going to bring that in here. This is just a simple hut that I found, just uh, as an example for this video. So I'm going to move it over here. And I'm going to put it here where it starts. I'm going to press S while I'm highlighting this layer here. That's for scale. It's a key sh shortcut for scale. 
and make it smaller. I'm just going to hover here and move it kind of into the center of this hand. There we go. So now what I'm going to have to do, I'm just going to add a motion blur if it's applicable. I'm going to click here. This is a parent link. So I'm going to link this to this null layer so that it'll basically be linked to that layer and it'll move along with it. So any keyframes, any scalings or anything like that that's on the null, this one will adjust it because now it's linked together. You can see here that it registers as null one, that's the parent. And as I move with it, you can see it move as well. I'm just going to move the position a little up here so it's kind of centered. And there we go. And I'm also going to duplicate it. And once I duplicate it, it's already set that it's set to the null, so it'll just keep going with it. Look at that, just like that. So now I'm going to do a little bit more to this just to make it look nicer. Um, I am going to add a key light, which is basically uh, color keying the green screen out. And to do that, I'm going to go into effects here. I'm going to look for key light right here. And I'm going to bring it into the actual video because that's where the green is. I'm going to click this dropper and click here. And you can see how it perfectly uh, takes away from the, the green. I'm going to reduce this a little bit so I get more of a balance and less and more grain. I'm going to increase this so it's more black. And that's basically it for the green screening. Just like that. So the other thing I'm going to do is I'm going to mask everything out from here. Since this is not green screened, obviously it won't be removed, but we specifically shot this in a way that the talent here will not um, disrupt any of the objects behind him or the blue tape. So that way I could just mask everything out without an, uh, unintentionally masking him out. So I'm just going to click here and I'm going to go to this pen tool and it's set to rotor vizier so I'm going to be able to mask it out just like this. Not everything is black, and it's just him. So I'm going to scrub through a little bit just to make sure that nothing else shows since the camera was moving around like you see here. What I'm going to do is just move the mask a little bit inward. And this one's cutting his hand out, so I'm going to move it like that. And let's go through it. This can go up a little bit more. And here. This can go up. So over here, I have this messed up just at the tip of his hair, but if I keep playing through it, it shows that a part of the green screen kind of pops in, or at least a tip uh, of the composition here. So if I lower the mask here, it'll end up hitting his hair earlier on in the video. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to create a keyframe for the mask from here and mask path. And over here, I'm just going to have it go down. All right. I've basically added the masking keyframes that I need to just to make sure that none of the objects outside show and that my subject here does not get cut off because of the mask. And there we go. That is it.